Hey there, it's Old Man Banjo. If you're anything like me, you've already got Diablo 4 withdrawal, and you're trawling through YouTube watching every speculative video that you can. Today, I want to talk about what we actually know about Diablo 4. I'm sure you've seen endless worries about class balance, particularly around the Barbarian and the Druid, worries about in-game itemization, and, you know, more or less every aspect of the game. In this video, I want to do the opposite. I want to go through the five things that I think we can be relatively certain will be the case with Diablo 4. The things that I think a reasonable person can claim to know to a reasonable standard. So let's start with number one. The servers are going to crash on launch. Oh my god, we all know. And if you're watching this video and you played, um, well, you'll know what I'm talking about. Have we ever really had the launch of a new WoW expansion without massive server crashes? Maybe once? Definitely, mm, no. I played from vanilla. I played every expansion besides Cataclysm on launch day. I think it's always crashed. I mean, I'm on Europe, so maybe Americans fared better. Maybe we're, Europeans are just cursed. But the servers are going to crash. That's the first thing that's going to happen when the game launches. We can know that with almost complete certainty. Number two. Class balance will be a mess. If you've been trawling through YouTube like me, you've seen all the videos by Zizaran and Kriparian and Asmongold, guys who know a lot more than I do about game design and game mechanics, and they seem to be of the opinion that in particular the Barbarian and the Druid are probably screwed. Uh, of course, they hedge this that we've only played to level 25 and in-game could be different, but I think given bl just Blizzard's past and ignoring the actual materials of the game, we can kind of tell that class balance at in-game is probably going to be really bad until we've had a few patches. And this, I think, is quite important because one of the things that uh, is tempting to think is, well, if Blizzard are seeing all these videos, why don't they just change everything all at once based on our feedback? And there's a, there's a logical reason for this, and it goes down to a principle of game design, which is players often report things in the wrong way. Let me explain. So if you're... Uh, old like me, you'll remember a game called Wolfenstein Enemy Territory, which was an absolutely fantastic team-based first-person shooter. And one of the things that happened in that game was the American, I think it was an American oh, M60, I can't remember the name of the gun. Um, and the American gun, the main rifle you would use, way outperformed the German Stuger. And the players were posting all on the forums about you know, why would you make a game where the Americans just have a naturally better default gun than the Germans? This is horrible game balance. Why would you do this? Is this some sort of pro-American bias? And, and people were really raging on the forums about it. And the devs of the game went and said, sorry, they're coded identically. But then the devs looked at the data and the devs realized that the players were in fact correct. The American gun was more powerful than the German gun, even though they were coded with the exact same values. And what the designers of Wolfenstein Enemy Territory eventually figured out was that the American gun sounded better, and because it sounded better, players had more fun using it, and because they were having more fun using it, they were more accurate. So that's why it's really important that Blizzard actually get the data, rather than just relying on a cloud of overwhelming feedback and YouTube commenters like me. Okay, story time is over. If you enjoyed that, uh, give me a like and subscribe below because I'm going to be turning out a lot more content on ARPGs, RPGs, and all things cool over the next, well, I mean, every day. I upload every day. I'm a workaholic. Anyways, number three. We know, given this is a live service game, that there will be substantial added content. I can't imagine that they went for the open world feel without thinking about how to monetize every niche of that open world by adding more content to buy. I mean, the other option would be they went with an open world because Last Ark and they wanted to clone Last Ark, but I don't think that's a sufficient enough reason. I am really expecting this game to have a lot of additional content, similar in a way to a game like Destiny 2. I think if anything, um, the success of Destiny 2. Success? Is that too strong a word? Anyways, I think they're going to monetize this in a way that's similar to Destiny 2, where they're making us buy 
whole new $30, maybe $40 expansions every year or so that really add on to the game and continue the story. Because one of the things that I'm really getting the vibe from about, about Diablo 4 is that if you're a nerd like me, and you probably are if you're watching this video, lore content has really taken off on YouTube and uh, forums and Wikipedia pages. People really care about lore in a way that perhaps they didn't back when I was a kid. At least I don't think I cared about the lore all that much. But the, the, the game feels like there's a very deep world that's going to be fleshed out by a lot of content that's going to come out of your wallet. And I think we can, we can know that for sure at this point. Number four. I think we can reasonably suppose that the other acts on launch will not be as fully fleshed out as Act 1. This goes back to the point I just made about them making an open world that they're probably going to flush out with lore that you're going to pay for. The game has also had, by Blizzard's standards, a relatively short dev cycle, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure when internal development started, but it feels like um, I think the game's had a shorter development cycle than Overwatch did and definitely shorter than World of Warcraft did. So I, I think we can be reasonably certain that the other the other acts are gonna feel a bit bare bones when we first get into them, but I don't think that should be a cause for panic. I think we would need to see what the game's roadmap looks like after launch to be worried about that. And this gets us to number five, the last thing I think we can be pretty darn sure about. And that is that Nightmare Dungeons or whatever the in-game grind ends up being after some iterations are going to be similar to Mythics and Woe, at least in their core mechanics. I would really be shocked given the way that we knew no Blizzard liked to do small group in-game progression. If the in-game system wasn't more similar to World of Warcraft and less similar to like Diablo 3, where it's just a prestige mechanic, I think there'll be real reason to push Nightmare content with an elite group of players for the best gear, the best items, and you know, lots of timed runs and bosses with quite a lot of mechanics and things like that that really need to be optimized because I think that's what Blizzard have decided is the best way to keep player retention in a game and they're gonna wanna keep player retention in the game so they can sell you more DLC content. In this way, I feel like the more I research these videos, the more I'm starting to feel like Diablo 4 is going to be like a combination of World of Warcraft and Destiny 2 in an ARPG. I think that's how Blizzard are envisioning the systems because they've seen how the, they've seen some difficulties in retention with World of Warcraft, but they've also had a lot of successes in keeping the game going this long. But they're also looking for how do you monetize a non-subscription based game that's all surrounded uh, 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 um, that's based on acquiring loot and enjoying lore. And if there's one game that's about enjoying the lore and acquiring loot, it's Destiny. Um, so I think I think that's what we're gonna see in the end game. And I think we can be reasonably certain about all these things. Things we can't be reasonably certain about are the more core issues of class balance, like whether melee will just be absolutely useless against bosses. I, I just don't think we can know that yet. And a lot of the other things that are being speculated upon, I think it's just too soon. I mean, it makes for good YouTube content, baby, but uh, I think these are the five things that we can be certain about. If you think I'm wrong about any of these, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Old Man Banjo out. Peace.